the forces of chaos are vast and terrifying to behold. With their power and flesh long since surrendered to the whims of the Dark Gods, those who reside within the Immaterium are all but unrecognisable as to who or what they once were. Although some within their ranks are so fervent in the service to their Dark Masters that they can utilise the terrible power of the warp to their own dark ends. With my Chaos Army growing in size, I realised that before I could have a proper battle, I'd need to find myself a HQ choice. Games Workshop offers a good range of models that are basically ready to paint out of the box, but in keeping with my current theme of an entirely customised force, I scavenged through my bits boxes and stacks of sprues and came up with this. I'm Dave from Warp Song Games and in today's conversion, I'm going to show you how to convert a custom Dark Apostle. My goal is to make a neutral Dark Apostle who will fit into any Chaos Force, not just the word bearers. So let me show you how to convert one for your own force. I start this conversion with a shiny new Chaos Havoc Sprue. I'm not sure if anyone else has this problem, but I've accumulated far too many Havocs since their re-release a few years ago. I've got about 25 of them currently. The problem was, I kept buying a box every time I went to Games Workshop so now I've got a small army of just Havocs. But at least when I finally assemble myself a few squads, I won't be short on firepower, as I have a literal pile of Reaper Chain Cannons handy. I'm going to ignore all these shiny new parts for now, as all we need from this sprue is the main body of a Havoc. I snip off the chest piece and the legs from the sprue and assemble myself a single Havoc body as a base for the conversion. With the body sorted, we now need to give him some appropriate equipment suitable for a Dark Apostle of Chaos. Models from the Dark Vengeance box are a good source of unique parts. Even though the models are slightly under scale, the plastic is good quality and has a good amount of detail on them, so I'll be sacrificing this marine's weapon arm in the name of Slanesh. The only dilemma is how to remove it safely from its current owner. I take my scalpel and press it into the armpit between the arm and the torso. I put a fair amount of force on the scalpel so I can get it through the plastic, so apologies for the shaky cam. I see no sense in completely destroying a model just for his arm, so I have to be careful not to cut all the way through to the shoulder pad on the other side. After nearly shaking apart the table, I successfully cut through the arm, although it still seems to be stuck to the model. I remedy this by carefully cutting through this small wire on his waist. I simply slice through it with my scalpel, and now the weapon arm is free of its previous owner, much to his displeasure. As you can see, I've successfully cut off the limb and saved the rest of the model. This guy is probably just going to join the hordes of tentacle possessed in the tainted host. But for now, onto the pile I suppose. Now that the arm is free, I can see what it will look like attached to the Havoc body. As you can see, the weapon arm fits on the body rather nicely, already given the impression of a commanding pose. Now for his other arm, I'll be using this crab claw I stole from a greater possessed. To get the arm to fit, I first snip off the square peg at the top of the arm. I keep snipping to get it as close as possible to the skin. I then carefully whittle away of whatever plastic debris is left with a scalpel until smooth leaving a perfectly usable arm imbued with the gift of chaos. Now that I've got both of the arms sorted, the Dark Apostle needs a suitably fancy backpack to grab the attention of the Chaos Gods. Since I've already pillaged parts from the Great Possessed, I'll keep up with the theme of stealing parts from expensive kits and turn my attention to the Master of Possession sprue. Here you can see there's a backpack that looks quite similar to the present edition Dark Apostle. I use my plastic snips and carefully remove it from the sprue. With its flaming skulls and chaos star, it should make a shiny addition to the Dark Apostle without any sort of conversion. The good thing about this backpack is that it's not an essential part of the kit, so it can just be swapped out for another backpack like you see here. Moving back to the conversion, with most of the parts now sourced, it's now time to actually assemble the Dark Apostle. To attach the arms, I first need to file down the underarm area. This is usually an unnecessary step, but this Havoc was once a prototype Berserker Lord and there are still remnants of glue here. It's important to file away any superglue in areas where you are applying plastic glue, as it wouldn't quite stick otherwise. 
I use my scalpel to whittle away any excess plastic on the spike at the bottom of the crozius and make sure that it's still symmetrical. With the weapon sorted and the area now clear, I apply some glue and attach the arm. I then use a cocktail stick to wipe off any excess glue. With the first arm attached, I can now glue the crab claw to the other side. At this point I realise the top of the possessed arm is an unusual shape. If I glue it on as it is, it'll end up posed in an awkward angle. To remedy this, I get my plastic snips and simply cut the offending plastic away. I keep snipping away the plastic until the area is flat. I then use my scalpel to whittle away any remaining raised areas. Lastly, I make sure to remove any loose plastic shavings. With the plastic snipped away, I can now pose his arm in a much more dynamic and expressive pose, in fitting with his HQ status. At this point, the Havoc's makeover is mostly complete, and he now looks much more like he fits the role of a Dark Apostle. So far, I like the pose of the model, so to complete the look, I will need to attach a suitably angry head. I use a cocktail stick to apply some glue into the neck. Then I simply place the head onto the glue and rotate it to a suitably angry pose. I chose a bald head as to not obscure the backpack detail as horns or plumage would do so. Now you can see a rather rare moment of me actually attaching the backpack on camera. As always, it's rather straightforward, the only trick is making sure it's square with his shoulders. With the backpack and head in place, a stylish twirl reveals what appears to be a completed model. Although I suddenly remember, as he's meant to represent a Dark Apostle, he should therefore at least have a few scrolls pinned to his armour. At this point, it's a little inconvenient, as I remember that I have a fully painted Dark Apostle also missing this finishing touch. In need of something to represent the parchments of Dark Prayers and Unholy Packs, I raid my bits box to see what I can find. I just need some sort of scroll to make the Dark Apostle look a little more legit. Drawing a blank, I turn to the Indomitus kit for spare parts. This chaplain's backpack is a rich source of papery bits. Although the chaplain doesn't seem too happy at having his purity seals reappropriated by chaos. Now to carefully snip these tiny parts off the backpack. Firstly, I need to remove this fake looking chaos star. It seems that even the loyalists know in their hearts of hearts that chaos is the true answer. Arguably, it's a shame to wreck up a backpack just to get a few pieces you can probably get for cheap on eBay. But for this conversion, I wanted to use what I had at hand so I could complete the video by the weekly deadline. I struggle to cut into the thick plastic with my plastic snips. It seems that the plastic on the backpack is slightly more chunky than usual. I make an incision through the centre of the backpack, first from the left hand side and then from the other direction, above the right vent. With the backpack mostly annihilated, I can now use my scalpel to retrieve the purity seals, although I suppose they're now impurity seals. I carefully cut each of the purity seals off the backpack, being cautious not to let them fly off the table. I then use my plastic snips to cut the excess plastic from the back of each seal, before finally cutting the last off with a scalpel. I'd say this was a fairly successful scavenge, as I only slightly damaged one of the purity seals. Here you can see a pile of rubble which was once a backpack. I've got to wonder, will any of the Indomitus set survive the taint of chaos? Although I've totally annihilated the backpack, the parts might still be good for detailing bases. It may seem like the chaplain's backpack is long gone, but it can quite easily be fixed with a regular backpack and a little pinning. Though this doesn't do much to hide the fact that the chaplain is bloody outraged. Back to our Dark Apostle, it's time to stick on the stolen purity seals. For the first step, I take my plastic snips and pinch off his nip. This seems like a fairly appropriate thing to do in the name of Slanesh. I then use my scalpel to flatten off any remaining plastic in the area, so there is plenty of space for the seals. Next. I apply some plastic glue to the area, ready to stick on the scroll. As I lower the scroll in place, I try to position it carefully as to not mount it in his armpit. After manoeuvring it into a suitable position, I apply a little more glue and then repeat the process again on his leg. Applying a little glue and then lowering the scrolls into position on his thigh. 
I know that it is deeply heretical to scratch paint off a completed model, but I completed this guy before realising that he needed some titty tassels and to get them to stick I need to scratch off the primer to reveal the plastic. This is important as plastic glue will only stick to plastic, it won't bond to paint and I don't want these falling off and getting lost. I use a large makeup brush to remove any plastic flakes left on the model. These are the best brushes for dusting models as they are good and soft. Using my scalpel, I repeat the same method of scratching off the paint layers to get to the plastic layer underneath. I'm very careful to only scratch off enough paint to accommodate the scrolls as I don't want to have to repaint the torso. Now I've finished scratching off paint, I dust them a final time. Next, I ready the impurity seals for spraying. As they are so small, I attach them to some blue tack so they don't get blown away by the spray. In keeping with the channel colours, even our blue tack is pink for some reason. Focusing back on the original Dark Apostle, I'm going to leave this guy as is for now and not paint him up in this video. My plan is to paint them up in the Emperor's Children colour scheme and maybe do a painting guide alongside his kinky disciples in the future. So for now, back to the tainted host Dark Apostle to finish this guide. Being careful not to ruin the paint job, I glue on the impurity seals with my Mr Hobby plastic glue. I carefully spread it around the seals to secure them in place. I then apply the paint to the scrolls, being careful not to spill over onto the armour. This video in part has been a test for future painting guides. If you're wondering why I've been putting off doing painting guides on this channel, well, I've been busy developing my painting skills up to a level where I feel that they'd be useful to the community. After a lot of practice over several different armies, I think I'm finally at that stage. So expect to see some painting guides here in the near future. Anyway, without any further self-doubt, here's the finished model. Here we have a unique and easy Dark Apostle model, with no green stuff work involved. I've of course painted him in the colour of my Soneshi warband, the Tainted Host, a splinter group to the Flawless Host. This is actually the first model I've ever painted without his face being obscured by a helmet, so I think I've done a pretty good job. With this colour scheme, there's lots of opportunity to paint flesh tones, so I've gotten quite good at it as of late. Although you'll have to wait till I do a guide on the Flawless Host colour scheme until I divulge all of the secrets. Admittedly, I've been a little lazy painting the eye on the backpack, but I'll save the finishing touches like that for when I eventually go back and apply the transfers. Lastly, the flaming skulls were highlighted with several washes of Tesseract Glow Technical Paint. I find that this produces quite a pleasing result with fairly little effort. This has been Dave from Warps on Games, I hope you enjoyed this heretical conversion. If you have any suggestions or questions then feel free to leave a comment below. And if you're interested in any of our other videos, then click on the links on the screen now.